Hello everybody! So here is Black Angel again and I'm here to talk to you about ENTPs. So who are ENTPs? First of all, ENTPs are extroverted intuition dominants, uh, which means that they are submerged in the realm of possibilities, chances, the potential, what could be. So their mind is constantly scanning uh, for new possible uses of the environment around them or whatever could be uh, that is currently not. So they are potential explorers. Uh, this is one of the traits of extroverted intuition. Another thing that extroverted intuition is, uh, is uh, uh, the, harmony, the harmony of the external, um, the external situations, and not the external environment, like I was about to say, but the external situation. What is the difference? So the point is that the harmony of the external situation means what is happening. So. Uh, it's some sort of uh, knowing how to handle the situation and not wanting to um, get trapped, uh, uh, to, to, to get sidetracked so that the situation doesn't go uh, as it should. One example of this could be when uh, the extrovert intuition dominant is, uh, and this is, this is one example that you can find uh, in socionics also, um, so one example is when the extrovert intuition dominant is going out of the house to go to work and they are late. Uh, so at that point they know how late, how much later, how much late they will they will arrive at work, and what the situation is going to be. So this setting that they have in their mind is the harmony of the external situation. Uh, if the wife or the mother or, or whoever the case may be tells the extrovert intuition dominant take out the trash, you're anyway late this is going to change and mold, uh, alter the harmony of the external situation and that's when an extrovert intuition dominant gets particularly pissed off because they cannot follow uh, what uh, their idea was uh, and the potential changes, uh, the possibilities become a bazillion more and they they get they basically find their their basic mode of operation not working as it should the moment that they they get sidetracked by something else that was not foreseen. Mm, in some ways, extroverted intuition is also uh, implied in uh, preventing uh, upcoming uh, possible situations. So there is a difference between introverted intuition and extroverted intuition in this sense, uh, which is that introverted intuition is cause and effect thinking. So if I act this way, this can happen. Um, if I start jump jumping on top of a car, I could... Uh, uh, fall down or I could break the roof of the car. Uh, this is cause and effect thinking. Whereas for an extroverted intu intuition dominant, the, uh, the prediction of what could be uh, becomes instead the whole fan of possibilities. If an introverted intuition dominant picks that one possibility that is higher than the others, the extrovert intuition dominant instead is going to list every possibility, likely or unlikely that it can be. Uh, so that's another trait of extrovert intuition in the leading position. Um, an extrovert intuition dominant is also the kind of person that has the ability to list you uh, every possibility that you have to achieve your goal in case you want to, to do something. Uh, one service that extra intuition dominance do for uh, interest sensing dominance that is extremely important is redirect them when they find into stupor because their plan didn't work. Uh, this is something that can happen with uh, interest sensing dominance. Sorry. 
Uh, so actuary intuition dominance have the ability to redirect and offer new chances, new opportunities and new possibilities uh, to the person that needs uh, this kind of information. Um, this is the dominant function of ENTPs uh, and this starts explaining a little bit the fame that they have of inventors. Uh, because obviously this tells you that these guys have the ability to see many possible ways uh, to do things or to uh, apply their understanding. That's the second function of uh, an ENTP, understanding, so introverted intuition. Uh, they are pretty creative in this sense, uh, so they like to analyze uh, more abstract ideas, uh, so theories, uh, um, the universe, uh, philosophy, anything that is abstract and works in abstract is something that is going to grasp an ENTP's attention. They're going to understand it in depth and they're going to be able to mold it, change it and adapt it to what societal needs are. So that's the ability of an ENTP. ENTPs are uh, the guys that are the most, the absolutely most non-conformist of all the MBTI. It is actually something that they consider um, uh, a boasting matter. Uh, they boast the fact that they are not like everybody else. And they do not want to be like everybody else. So they do not suffer. Uh, the idea of fitting, of not fitting in, but they actually praise themselves for not fitting in. Uh, that's the peculiarity of ENTPs. Uh, and it's connected to their uh, introverted thinking uh, ability of disrupting everything that is already existing and creating uh, new ideas, concepts, um, or whatever. Um, they can create and recreate, change and adapt. Uh, they're, they're basically this kind of, of type of person um, in, uh, in the MBDI. Uh, one famous example of ENTP is uh, what's, what's proudly recognized, uh, um, and this time I agree, it's uh, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was an ENTP. And he tells a lot about, uh, he says a lot about uh, extroverted intuition and uh, introverted and introverted thinking in his, uh, uh, in his quotes, uh, if you want to check it. Um, for example, there is one quote that I, that I remember uh, that says uh, that uh, logic can bring you from here to there, but intuition can lead you everywhere. Uh, imagination, that's how he puts it, but uh, he is referring to intuitive abilities. Um, another thing, another quote that struck my attention in matters of uh, nonconformism of ENTPs is uh, when he says, uh, following the crowd can lead, can lead you wherever the crowd is going. Um, it basically, I don't remember exactly the words, but it's basically saying, if you keep following the crowd, you're not going to get anywhere, uh, but where the crowd is going. And that's, that's pretty interesting. Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of quotes by Albert Einstein that actually represent uh, the ENTP pretty well. Um, one thing that used to be said about uh, Albert Einstein, I don't know if it is true about him, but it's sure a, a very funny uh, topic to, to bring up in this sense, uh, is uh, that he used to go around with sock, socks of different color uh, or anyway forget to it and stuff like that. So that's because of, uh, that, that can be attributed in an ENTP and that happens to ENTPs actually. Um, and that would be an introverted sensing inferior matter. Uh, so introverted sensing inferior matter means uh, having a complete disregard despite having the interest in uh, uh, solving health matters, relaxation and so on. So these guys are so stuck in their heads and thinking about uh, changing the world uh, and doing things for, for the sake of doing them uh, that they forget their, their own physical needs, uh, their own personal needs. 
uh, that's something to consider about ENTPs, uh, their, their inferior function, introverted sensing. Uh, they normally revolve around environments, places, situations uh, where they are completely at ease, where they feel relaxed, where they feel comfortable from, in a physical sense, from a physical point of view. Um, for example, if they find a restaurant where they feel comfortable going, uh, they're going to go there from across town. Uh, but if they find themselves not feeling comfortable at another restaurant, they're never going to set foot in there ever again. And this doesn't apply only to restaurants. It applies to houses, it applies to universities, it applies to anything having to do with uh, um, their personal well-being. They, they subconsciously act this way, they, they do not plan acting this way, uh, but they do uh, because of that. Um, they have zero control on their food, uh, they have zero control over the environment around them also. Um, they have a chronic lack of attention towards house uh, matters, uh, keeping the house uh, or dealing with uh, anything that has to do with interior sensing, cleanliness, uh, health, and they are in deep need of someone taking care of them in this sense. Uh, the ENTP is one of those types that actually appreciates uh, this kind of care towards them. And they're never going to push away an ISFJ or an ISTJ that provides uh, this kind of uh, uh, sensation. They're also in deep need of distraction and sensory pleasures. So, so Another thing that they do subconsciously, subconsciously that is attributed to introverted sensing is they secretly dream of being uh, pleasant to the sight of people they care about. Uh, so to be physically, aesthetically pleasant to the sight. So it has nothing to do with sex by itself, uh, but it's more a matter of being a work of art. Uh, looking like a work of art. In fact, uh, both ENTPs and INTPs tend to chronically forget about the sexual sphere also. So they are uh, among the childlike, childlike types uh, and they really have a disregard, a complete disregard and a distraction uh, in, in sexual matters. So they need to be aroused uh, and it's not particularly easy to actually arouse them. Uh, so, yeah, that's, um, that's another peculiarity of ENTPs. Um, third function, their focus of self-esteem is extroverted feeling. So they need to be accepted, to, to feel that they are liked and accepted by people they care about. So if they feel, um, if they have a, a difficulty with someone in an environment uh, and they feel hostility from this person, they're going to try to do everything in their power uh, to fix the situation. And if they can't, they're probably going to leave um, because that's unbearable for them. It really strikes their self-esteem heavily. Um, one trait of extroverted feeling in the tertiary, in this tertiary position and in the knot of self-esteem is that the person can apologize for being for, for behaving poorly even if they actually didn't. Uh, they tend to be among the most the, the, the types that are most perceived as insensitive because they do not see by themselves if the person in front of them uh, could have been offended by what, by what they said, and that's that's something that they that, that that's an ability that they lack, uh, the empathy to figure out if the person in front of them could have taken what they said badly, or if the person in front of them uh, feels a specific way about something. They are not particular, a particularly empathetic type. Uh, they do have the ability to see and understand. Uh, what kind of person they have in front of them. So they're good at analyzing people, um, but they're not good at uh, understanding their emotional states. So I'm having some problems here. Uh, everything is falling down. <laughs> Just give me a moment. Okay, let's do it this way. Um, so we were saying, um, this is pretty much everything about the functions and their role 
uh, in the type, uh, what else can I say? Anagrams and ENTP could be, uh, I would go for um, possibly Anagram 2, um, Anagram 4, Anagram 7 because of the scattered uh, pattern. Anagram 5 could be an option, mm. but I would say that Anagram 7 is probably one of those uh, that is most likely because of the fear of the pain uh, and that is one of the ENTP's weaknesses. Uh, Anagram 5 works very well. Mm, I'm not entirely sure about the feeling, the hard to try it Anagrams. Uh, but they could work too uh, when it comes to uh, ENTPs. I don't think they could ever be an anagram 6. And I don't think they could ever be an anagram 6 because uh, they are too optimistic. They tend to be a very optimistic type. Uh, so anagram 6 uh, really doesn't, doesn't resonate when it comes to them because anagram 6 uh, is the skeptic, the loyal skeptic, but it's also very extremely pessimistic type. Uh, what they do is normally see every negative possibility that is upcoming or every possible negative consequence of what is going on. So uh, that's not an ENTP thing uh, to be so negative. They're actually pretty enthusiastic individuals. Uh, so, I think I will close this, oh, with whom ENTPs get along, ISFJs, uh, pole position, INTPs, uh, because they can think together and come to conclusions together, uh, and ESFJs, obviously. Um, who else? They can get along pretty well with ESTPs and ISTJs, so these are another two types with whom ENTPs get along pretty well. I think I will close this here about this type. Oh, one thing I can tell you about ENTPs. Uh, if you stumble into someone that starts talking really quick and it's really almost impossible to understand and to figure out how the hell they can pronounce so many words so quickly, uh, that's probably an ENTP. Uh, that's the one thing that I notice uh, about ENTPs. I have two very close and they, they have this tendency that at some point when they're captured, when they're raptured in their thoughts, they are caught up in what they're thinking and they're trying to explain and then they start talking extremely quickly. It is not difficult to follow them because they speak very clearly. They have that TI uh, that explains you things very clearly and systematically. But at the same time, it's funny to see because they have this childlike expression and this uh, light in their eyes because of what they're seeing and they're trying to explain and they start talking extremely quickly so this is something i wanted to tell you uh, because i found it very interesting not all the ntps are like this but most of them are so this is everything i have about this type i think i will close this here and i will talk to you soon bye